We have been covering the issue with Venezuela and its designs on Panama, primarily from the perspective of Venezuela and their methodology, their timetable, and what they have to gain. I think in this video we're going to look at this from more of a, a Panama perspective and see why perhaps this wouldn't necessarily be seen by them as an incredibly bad thing. Um, they have, over the last year, opened up all sorts of avenues with China at the expense of the U.S. There has been this issue down there with the Panama Papers, what they call the Odebrecht scandal, which came very close yesterday to costing President Kuczynski, the president of Peru, his office. Um, he survived barely. Um, he's a very wealthy man and very well connected, but he almost was taken down by this. A great many leaders have been taken down by the Panama Papers. Um, largely seen as a problem of U.S. corruption and U.S. influence. And the drug trade down there is really seen as a problem that the U.S. created. And with good, you know, there's a lot of evidence for that. Um, you know, you can make the arguments of demand and supply. That, you know, there was a giant demand, therefore the supply was created by the South Americans, and then when we went down there and introduced um, industrial-sized agriculture, it was just, instead of being applied to, you know, grain and wheat and that type of thing, it's been applied to the drugs. So, we're going to cover today the uh, the issues with, with China and the move in Central and South America toward communism, socialism, and Marxism. Um, this article here from the Trumpet, it's... Uh, it talks about the canal, and it talks about how this has been foretold for a long time, that once we lost this canal, that this was going to happen with China. And it's a, they've signed an, a maritime tr transport agreement. We're going to cover that in another tab. But um, just what I wanted to cover here. However, China's interest in Panama goes far beyond isolating Taiwan. Panama, and more specifically the Panama Canal, is China's most strategic prize in Latin America. It is one of the most important sea gates in the world. If China controls the Panama Canal, it can easily use it as a choke point to strangle the U.S. economy. It would pose a major threat to U.S. security, and that's a big deal. That's what we've been talking about. Um, there's really, if they control this and they end up controlling this, um, it's going to be a bad deal. And with the Chinese and the Russians now holding Venezuela's debt and pulling the strings in Venezuela, and we've also established in other videos that there's a Venezuelan company that is keeping the Panama Canal going. They're the ones that are supplying the tugs needed to pull these big Panama Panamax containers through. Um, but anyway, next tab, we are going to go to uh, this maritime transport agreement that they've signed. And the most important thing that you read in this down here is um, Panama will be able to register shipping companies, Chinese-owned vessels, Panama will soon open several consulates in China. Last week, Panama opened its first embassy in Beijing and its first consulate in Shanghai. Okay, that's that's a pretty big deal. I mean, and we also have, you know, Air China is now going to have direct flights. So the, the Chinese are hip deep down there. And they have decided that it's worth the investment to bail out Venezuela. So the, you have to understand, you know, their take on things. They are moving towards a more socialist, Marxist, Leninist model in that region because of the withdrawal of the U.S. inside its borders. You know, this, this America first thing has come at the cost of our standing in the world. And it's just, it's just the way it is. There's a, um, this is the trumpet again, uh, the rise and fall of a super buyer talks about this. Um, how, you know, when we built this, how surrendering Panama is just absolutely the worst strategic thing that we could have done. Now, we could have maintained influence down there, you know, and maintained, you know, U.S. presence there, but um, this is uh, the vice president of Panama. She's a, a very sharp cookie. If we covered her before, too. Um, it, it covers it here. Chinese companies have already been active in seeking out strategic investment opportunities in the region. With these deals, a new railway linking Panama and Costa Rica and uh, the current president's inward-looking America First strategy, the stage is set for China to use Panama as a bridgehead for a surge of investment and trade deep into Latin America, including talks on free trade. Um, 
So this is also how the world is perceiving this. You know, they we've talked about, and we're going to go to the map here real quick, just to, to cover this. Um, this issue with Venezuela having designs on Panama, you know, is there going to be proxy for the Russians and the Chinese in this? Um, it's just their beachhead. This is their control in this country, just like we've used other countries in Europe and other countries in the Middle East as our beachheads. This is this is theirs. And the Colombians calling up 62,000 troops, just like we, we talked about yesterday, this is not being reported anywhere in the mainstream media. This is a country of about 50 million people. Okay, we're a country of about 400 million people. This would be the equivalent of the U.S. calling up half a million troops. Population versus amount of troops called up. 62,000 troops is a big deal for a little tiny country like Colombia. And this is the reason. Because we've seen now Venezuela is pretty much, you know, laid all the groundwork. And there's also this article here from Reuters. Sorry, it's, uh, there we go. The Chinese have been buying up land all the way around the canal. And in that article from uh, The Trumpet, it talks about, and this, that article was written back in 2000, how if the Chinese got their foothold down there, that they would build, buy up a bunch of land to build um, military bases that they could, you know, use strategically against the United States. And I know I hear a bunch of people you know, talking about, oh, the U.S. will never allow it, the U.S. will... Where, show me any evidence in the last 17 years that the U.S. has done anything down there to stop this. And we've had two different administrations completely. We had the Obama administration, we had the Bush administration during this time. Okay, so we've had, you know, eight years of right, eight years of left, and neither one has done a thing about it. And the current one doesn't seem all that interested in what's going on down there. I mean, we finally saw something uh, briefly stated about this issue with Venezuela, but threatening to decertify Colombia, threatening to invade uh, Venezuela, um, his Twitter account being used very irresponsibly to give the perception to the world that the U.S. Um, doesn't want to have anything more to do with people south of the border, whether that's the actual desire or not, that is the perception that is being put out. And when you can't control your own message, you know, or the message that you're controlling, you, you have a blind spot to, it's going to cut, it's going to cause problems and it's going to open doors. The Russians have now, they're now sending Brazil wheat, they're sending the Venezuelans wheat. And you talk about trade, how could it possibly be less expensive to take wheat from Russia and get it to Venezuela and to Brazil than it would be to get it from the U.S. And kids, it's not the GMO thing. Hungry people, and, and you mark my words, hungry people, go be hungry for three or four days and see if, you know, somebody hands you a loaf of bread if you're going to look on the back and say, is this GMO? Yeah, no. You know, you're, you're not going to sit there and do that when you watch your kids go hungry. And that's what's going on down there. They're, you know, they, they have a lot of people, what they call poverty and what we call poverty are two totally different things. The GMO thing is a first world problem. In fact, it's, it's something that causes a great deal of contempt from places like this in the world where we sit and we have such a plethora and an overabundance of food that we can sit and say, oh, well, this was grown that way and that was grown this way. I'm going to buy this other over here. And then you know, when people are starving... And I mean, I don't mean starving someplace, you know, way over in, in Africa or someplace. We're talking right in our backyard. This, it just shouldn't happen. And that we have a country like Russia solving the problem for them. It's just, it just shows a blindness and a, and a lack of priority in my mind. Things that we should be worrying about, we aren't. And things that we are worrying about, we shouldn't be. Um, that's just personal opinion. But this is something that has been warned about for a long time, about once we gave away the, the channel, um, that we were going to face this eventually. And it's here. Um, it, uh, it talks about, and I want to find that just so I can, um, here it is. It's feasible that this secret 
Illegal deal between Panama and China, and China will open up a base for Chinese warships, submarines, and bombers only 900 miles from Miami. Should the Red Chinese choose to base their J-11 attack jets in Panama, ostensibly to promote the security of the canal, this would place them within striking distance of the U.S. mainland. The potential threat to U.S. and world security posed by the Panama-China deal is difficult to fathom. This was written 17 years ago. And it's coming to pass. So, just to be clear, the problems that are going on in the world right now, I don't hold the current administrator responsible for. But I do hold him responsible for his attitude and his reactions toward it. You know, he did make the promise in his... It was one of the things that I saw in his 100 Days plan. I thought, oh, this is a good idea. When he said, you know, he's going to label China a currency manipulator. It's the, you know, subject of a video of what currency manipulation is and how it can help a country and how it can help uh, stimulate artificially an economy. Well, up or down, one way or the other. But then, as soon as he gets elected, he's like, no, I changed my mind. Sorry, no, uh, decided I'm not going to do that now. It's just the, the idea of that, of saying you're going to do something and then not doing it, just like with the pledge to, you know, during during the primary. It's, you can't, when you can't trust somebody to keep their own word when they give you, the, you know, they give you a word that they're going to do something and then they don't. So, anyway, this is what's going on in Panama. You know, they are uh, looking elsewhere now uh, to make ties and to see their future. I don't think they see in 20 years... The U.S. being their, their primary partner in commerce or trade or the military or any other way. So anyway, 12 minutes uh, running over a little over here. But like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much. Happy holidays, and we will see you next time.